Well, again, <laughs> good afternoon. Um, the, uh, the theme of this um, OECD Japanese, uh, Jap Japan Samar is um, to take a focus on science education, particularly with reference to the most recent PISA results. Um, and what we've been asked to prepare, um, the three of us who are speaking now, are case studies from um, our different communities. Um, I, I'm going to take a slightly different tact. Um, uh, Professor Tan's uh, talk about Singapore was fantastic. It was at a high level of policy. I want to take it down to a more practical level of actual practice. Um, he had mentioned um, that the goal really is to enable science instruction to be authentic and practical. And I, I really want us to take a few minutes to look carefully at what, what, what does it mean to be um, practical and, and, and what does practice look like when it really tries to create these kinds of opportunities for students to have active learning. Um, we are uh, an, an NGO, a non-governmental non organization at Asia Society, and we work with schools. And we work particularly in helping teachers develop the capacity to teach in this more active style. So what I want to talk to you about today is a case of how this one NGO is trying to uh, work with schools to be able to help teachers develop these kinds of pedagogical approaches. So it's going to be much more of a deep dive into the actual practice, um, more so than the um, larger sort of uh, uh, picture of U.S. education uh, more broadly. So I hope that's um, going to be helpful. Um, I want to uh, present, um, you, should, you should know that um, our intent in uh, supporting science instruction um, at Asian Society is really twofold. Um, it's to help uh, promote um, their capacity to uh, provide deep, engaging learning in science, but it's just importantly to help, um, help teachers use their science education, use science education as a means to develop a, a broader set of intellectual and uh, social emotional competencies that we call global competence, and you've heard that referenced uh, earlier. Um, hence, the title of my presentation is the Develop Developing Global Competence Through Science Education. Um, what uh, we define um, global competence uh, as the knowledge, skills, and dispositions that uh, enable young people to, to understand and act on issues of global significance. And what you see on the screen are the four dimensions or four domains of global competence as delineated by Asia Society and the Council of Chief State School Officers uh, in the United States. And the framework suggests that globally competent students, um, they are able, first of all, to be able to investigate the world. And by that we mean they have the, the complex thinking skills and the problem solving capacities to first frame an issue as a global issue, even if it manifests itself in a local community and then be able to use resources from around the world to frame a coherent argument that is evidence-based and really um, provides a, a, a deep understanding, looking at an issue from multiple perspectives, um, of what a solution to a, an engaging problem would be. So it's the high-level uh, thinking skills that really go into investigating the world. But we also think what's critical for students is the ability to recognize perspectives. And by that I mean, as we say in the States, to be able to put yourself in another person's shoes and to look from their perspective and to see how the world looks from another's eyes. To really be able to understand and act and weigh the views of different uh, perspectives and, and ultimately to begin to bring those into your own perspective as well. Um, we also think that uh, global competence involves being able to communicate ideas, particularly to be able to look at the differences in audiences and to understand the nuances that need to be thought through as you try to communicate across cultural boundaries, and also very uh, definitely to be able to collaborate across uh, cultural bounds as well, to work with people who are very different from your, yourself and work with them as equals within a, um, towards a common task. And then ultimately we think that it's very important as, a, as an aspect of global competence to take what you learned and to be able to take action in an entrepreneurial way that allows you to essentially make a contribution to the common good. Um, we think that's a really important value and ethic uh, that we believe young people need to have in today's world. And so taking action in a, in a way that's going to enhance the world is part of our definition of global competence. Um, now this is the way we've defined global competence, and it's very uh, similar to the framework for global competence that OECD will be putting forward, um, I think, in the uh, near future as we look at the assessment of global competence as part of PISA in 2018. And in fact, in a recent publication, OECD uh, writes, global competence includes the acquisition of in-depth knowledge and understanding of global and intercultural uh, issues. 
the ability to learn from and live with people from diverse backgrounds, and the attitudes and values necessary to interact respectfully with others. So essentially, what I want to describe to you is a system for developing global competence uh, reflecting both Asian societies and, and we believe OECD's uh, definition of global competence uh, in this context of, of developing uh, in-depth science knowledge. Um, we call our system for um, uh, developing uh, global competence the graduation performance system, or GPS for short. And at the heart of the GPS system are a set of what are called performance outcomes. Um, the GPS performance outcomes are essentially a set of standards uh, to, or criteria for benchmarking proficiency in student work. Through a systematic uh, development process uh, led by subject matter experts, we have established performance outcomes across the major subject areas, uh, mathematics, language arts, social studies, uh, arts and world language, and uh, of course science. And we've also established a cross-cutting set of performance um, uh, outcomes called global leadership outcomes that describe um, a set of outcomes for young people that we think cut across all subject areas. The performance outcomes in, in, in indicate the quality of work students should um, exhibit to indicate global competence. Importantly, in science, as well as in mathematics and language arts, these performance outcomes are aligned with standards of proficiency within the um, discipline as well. So in the area, uh, you may have heard of the Common Core, um, that focuses on standards in English, uh, language arts, and mathematics. Um, our, our performance outcomes are aligned to those standards, as well as the next generation science standards as well. Um, so in any level in science, the performance outcomes reference what students should be able to show, that is evidence of global competence, as well as uh, evidence of scientific knowledge and the ability to apply critical science concepts. Um, within each subject area, there are performance outcomes for kindergarten through second grade, uh, third grade, fifth grade, eighth grade, 10th grade and 12th grade, that, that goes in other words right up through the end of high school in American schools. So in ev ev essence, um, uh, for example, the performance outcomes from a well-defined set of, what they do is form a well-defined set of expectations for what proficiency in scientific understanding and global competence should look like in student work. In other words, a learning progression for developing proficiency in science and uh, global competence. And here are an example of, um, of, of one performance outcome for 12th grade science. And I was going to read a couple of those to you, but it's way too small. So just know that these are the high level um, performance outcomes for science at 12th grade that uh, you can see in your packet illustrate the kind of learning that we're expecting young people to be able to manifest in their work. And these then again become a guide for both teachers' development of curricular units, but also um, how they are assessed uh, in their performance later on. Um, and here is an example then, again, probably more visible in your, in your packets, of a rubric designed to assist teachers in assessing these performance outcomes. So along with the, G, the, the GPS performance uh, outcomes, the GPS rubrics um, were created to serve as scoring guides uh, that enable teachers to provide science, uh, specific language for describing where a learner is uh, in uh, his or her journey towards proficiency. And so you'll see uh, this rubric goes from emerging to developing to proficient uh, and to advanced. Now, the performance outcomes um, and related rubrics are primarily for the teacher's use. But part of achieving uh, these learning outcomes is to make uh, sure that students themselves know what is, ex what is expected of them. Uh, however, performance outcomes can also often be kind of um, confusing to, to, to students. So what we've also then created are um, what we call I can statements. And all these are essentially are translations of the performance outcomes uh, into language that students find easily understandable. But they're very important because they provide a, a way for students uh, to take responsibility for their own learning by self-assessing and monitoring their progress towards proficiency. Now, um, the performance outcomes and the I can statements 
provide a clear set of expectations for what uh, the results for student learning um, a teacher will strive for uh, in designing um, their lessons and their curriculum units. The task the teacher then faces is to actually design curriculum units that systematically guide students through inquiry-driven uh, instruction towards achieving the performance outcomes. So we help teachers do that by showing them um, how to practice high-quality project-based learning. And as I'm sure I, you know and it's been referenced in this uh, meeting before, um, project-based learning is the approach to teaching in which students acquire knowledge and skills in the context of addressing and engaging important uh, problem or issue. It differs from a lecture format uh, of teaching where teachers essentially tell students what they are uh, expected to know um, to one where a teacher's role is to be to organize learning activities where students are required to engage in a series of guided inquiries uh, in order to discover or produce knowledge themselves. And very importantly, um, these inquiries and the knowledge students gain from them lead to uh, a culminating or summative uh, task which allows students to um, apply what they know uh, and have learned in the development of, of a knowledge product, an actual product from the project itself. And it's on the basis of the uh, summative knowledge product or, or performance of learning that students display what they have learned in an authentic way and teachers can judge the quality of their learning. In other words, teachers assess student understanding and skill through the quality of their, of their students' performance on the summative task, which is why these kinds of assessments are called performance-based assessments. And what we strive for teachers to create are engaging learning projects that use the performance outcomes to first uh, anchor the design of project-based curriculum uh, units so that students' learning activities are um, designed towards these specific learning outcomes. And then second, uh, with the rubrics, um, provide a basis for teachers to judge the degree to which um, the work students produce actually meets the ex expected levels of proficiency. And what you, are, um, what you see on the screen are, are two critical tools that we provide to teachers to guide their approach in designing project-based uh, lessons and curriculum units and um, for designing the performance-based assessments um, uh, for students to show what they know in authentic ways. Um, on, the, on the left, from your perspective, is uh, one of a series of what we call global issue overviews. Um, these are relatively brief overviews of important issues in the world today that teachers can use as a sort of basis for designing uh, 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 projects. Um, all of the issues are aligned to the UN Sustainable Development Goals, so in effect, the issues, um, uh, issue overviews provide a framework for, um, of knowledge about the kinds of important global and intercultural issues that are, are critical to the development of global competence. The overviews also provide um, a set of enduring understandings and essential questions that, along with the performance outcomes, provide the overall framing for the learning activities that teachers and, uh, 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 teachers and students engage in. So in this instance, the issue that's depicted in the overview is biodiversity. And again, the, the uh, overview provides a, a definition and then enough information about biodiversity to stimulate a teacher's thinking about how the content they want to teach, uh, be it ecology, learning uh, environmental science, and so forth, how that can be fitted into a project um, on biodiversity. And with that um, is also, the, the overview provides a few exemplary enduring understandings, of things that students should, should take away and, 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 and be knowledgeable about long after they've actually done the lesson, hence the notion of enduring understanding um, that uh, teachers can direct them, develop the curriculum around. And so in this instance, a, 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 an example of some of the uh, enduring understandings that are strived for are things like biodiversity includes all the plants, animals, and uh, microorganisms in an ecosystem. Uh, biodiversity describes the interrelationships between organisms in an environment or the genes contained in organisms are an important part of biodiversity. 
And as well, as I mentioned, the, um, the global overviews provide essential questions that also are, are, are the kinds of questions that really help students dive deep into the content. So for example, how can we predict human impact on biodiversity? How can we identify and evaluate threats to biodiversity? And how can we design uh, conditions to, pre pre uh, prevent, um, to protect biodiversity? Um, what is also depicted uh, on the screen on your right-hand side are what are called performance assessment shells. And essentially, these are kind of templates, um, or, or uh, what, the, the, what these templates or these shells provide is affect the structure that teachers use to develop the overall learning project. Uh, specifically, it provides a series of um, exemplary learning uh, outcomes and formative tasks, I'm sorry, learning activities and formative tasks that lead to the performance, uh, the summative performance task. Um, and each of these uh, mini assessment shells we provide, teachers reflect a, particularly, a particular approach to um, performance of learning. So in, th in this instance, um, the approach is engineering. And what the engineering shell provides is a way for teachers to support students at using design thinking uh, to construct uh, an object that has practical utility, that applies academic concepts to real world problems, and connects to uh, globally significant issues. And so the, the engineering assessment shell allows teachers, um, and it really shows them how to use the engineering theme as a way of organizing learning activities. So what we provide uh, teachers is first of all a range of global issues and overviews, and then a range of performance assessment shells. And what teachers do is think about the content they want to teach and um, decide whether, uh, or which of the global issues provides a suitable vehicle for designing a project to reach their, to, reach their, um, to, to teach their content. And here, um, the teacher has chosen biodiversity. And then they also decide what kinds of learning activities and formative and summative tasks would provide a suitable process for guiding students in a series of inquiries and displays of learning of that content. And here again, the teacher has chosen engineering. And then uh, the summative task thing in this instance will be for students to design an engineering project uh, based on uh, or addressing the issues of biodiversity. Um, so uh, from a structural perspective, this is what teachers are designing. Um, a high quality curriculum unit focusing on important global issues that's, uh, that uh, supports student learning in a series of learning activities and formative tasks. And um, those learning activities lead up to a summative task that allows them, that is to say the students, display their knowledge in a way that uh, professionals do in the real world. Um, what I've done so far really is to identify the parts of a globally focused curriculum unit that can be the basis for high quality science inter instruction. What I want to show um, now is, is in effect how, you, how teachers, how we help teachers bring all these parts together to actually uh, construct the unit uh, using what we call the performance assessment uh, storyboard template. Now in the first phase of the, um, of the development of, of uh, as I just said, teachers, they identify the global issue and performance assessment strategy that fit their discipline. And then they um, identify the enduring understandings and essential questions that they want students to address. Uh, these can, again, be from those that are identified in the assessment shells and the, uh, um, the, the overviews themselves, or they can be ones that teachers themselves come up with that they think will be the most uh, useful in actually guiding the development and understanding of the core content that they're trying to achieve. The second phase, then, of um, our, our help of teachers to create these project, uh, globally focused project-based units is to identify the performance outcomes in science that they um, will later assess uh, uh, later assess their students' work. Um, these performance outcomes will support teachers as they both create the assessment rubrics um, and actually use them to assess student work later on. So here we have, for example, a teacher has chosen to identify three performance outcomes, these ones on the left here, um, my left, your left, I'm sorry, um, and, um, and those will be the basis for the rubric that's been put together. Um, and so when it comes to uh, time to assess student uh, learning products, the rubrics help um, teachers identify if a student, in fact, uh, has performed at a level of emerging, developing, proficient, or advanced. 
And notice so far then that um, what teachers are doing is, um, is detailing what, what uh, success looks like in terms of students learning, what the, what the end result is that uh, she's striving for before she actually engages in developing the learning activities. So we're sort of using a, a sense of what the result is and then backwards designing what the activities will actually look like. Um, and then the final, um, the, the next step is, is for teachers to design the, uh, the formative tasks and learning activities that students will actually engage in. And each task will help uh, lead up to the final summative task, as I've mentioned before. Um, here, um, I provide an, an example of one task that um, uh, is, could be used in this, in this context. In this instance, the task is to define engineering and establish uh, its importance. And the learning activity itself is to have students observe an unfamiliar object and, and uh, speculate on its, uh, its uh, use um, and its, uh, its origins based on the, the physical characteristics of the object. And how do teachers uh, come up with uh, ideas for learning activities and formative tasks? Um, teachers uh, that we work with can choose from a bank of um, formative tasks in a resource bank we call the Instructional Strategies Bank. Um, and this is essentially a library of instructional activities um, available to teachers digitally and provides um, enough uh, scaffolding, if you will, and guidance so that even novice teachers can feel confident um, that they, as they design their storyboards. But of course, as teachers become more experienced in designing projects, they uh, become better able to design their learning activities themselves. And then finally, teachers complete their curriculum unit by designing the summative task that they'll ask students to engage in. Um, in this instance, um, what the teacher wants her students to do is to take what they've learned about engineering and combine that with uh, the academic knowledge um, and uh, enduring understandings that they've uh, learned uh, in, in, during the course of the unit uh, about di uh, related to biodiversity and then use this knowledge to um, design a solution to a problem that may uh, be a global problem concerning biodiversity or a problem uh, in their own communities uh, that has global implications. Um, an example of this kind of specific problem uh, students might address, um, the Global Issue Overview on Biodiversity gives an example of how mosquitoes pose a human uh, health risk and yet eradication um, can be destructive to biodiversity. Mosquitoes cause disease uh, and like malaria and, and Zika, but they also help um, recycle fresh water by eating organisms in the water. Uh, and they give uh, and they uh, and and give themselves um, and they this and they themselves are food for other species. So the question is, uh, how do we protect humans against the negative impacts of mosquitoes without harming biodiversity? Um, the engineering performance assessment shell helps the teacher frame the question um, around design thinking and innovative thinking. And in terms of formative tasks, where uh, within the curriculum, the teacher could. Um, Focus, for example, on, um, on uh, epidemiology, studying the, the spread of mosquito-borne diseases, or uh, like what diseases are caused by interactions between humans and mosquitoes, and what, are the con what, are the, um, what, are the, what is the incidence, what are the patterns of uh, urban or rural or differences in demographic uh, populations, what are the longer-term effects of diseases, for example, um, Zika affects unborn generations as well as living people, and malaria uh, can linger for many years and other periods of remission and so forth. So those kinds of issues that could be tagged in within this, uh, this context. And a host of other kinds of content the teacher would actually want to, um, to focus on. And so then the summative tasks, so if, if these are the content that would be looked at and, and learned through the formative tasks and, and learning and, uh, um, activities, the summative assessment could then ask students to design a solution to the problem of um, mosquito-borne disease. Um, well, one well-known solution, for example, that has been uh, attempted is the distribution of mosquito nets uh, through campaigns like Against Malaria. However, these campaigns are not always successful because in some places, people, um, use, people who were given mosquito nets actually proceeded to use them for fishing instead of mosquito protection. Um, they placed higher priority on getting food than on avoiding mosquitoes. So the engineering challenge could be, what can we design um, as a more effective solution than either aggressive eradication or traditional mosquito nuts, nets? 
so examples of summative projects might be to redesign a net so, as, uh, so it intentionally um, serves a dual purpose, a fishing net by day but a mosquito net by night, or to prepare um, a design specification that defines different solutions such as keeping mosquitoes, mosquito habitats away from areas of human interaction. So these kinds of um, projects uh, require students to in investigate the world, uh, that is, for example, research the issue and, and the size of the problem and what solutions have been attempted, uh, to recognize perspectives, um, to understand why solutions uh, posed by Western um, minds uh, don't always work in, in these cultures, to communicate ideas where the problem and potential solutions to others uh, such as uh, possible um, to other to to others such as possible investors or non profits the public to communicate to these kinds of different audiences and ultimately to take action to be able to create a product uh, specification sheet or other attempt to solve the problem um, the engineering performance assessment um, shell gives many opportunities to challenge students to think more deeply about science as a purposeful and useful dis discipline. And the goal for creating the engineering shell specifically was to give all the students the opportunity to learn design thinking connected to science and, all, and, and, and in other areas to other disciplines as well. But it's, it's the capacity then to use design thinking to actually solve a problem. So in the case of biodiversity and the mosquito example, students apply biology, ecology, and environmental science concepts to the problem of how, human and, uh, how humans and mosquitoes interact and how uh, these interactions are connected with the broader web of life. Um, so finally, in this instance, um, the teacher also asked the students to explain their uh, solution in a one to three page paper that goes into um, the result, the, the, um, the, what the object does, um, how it's used, and the re result that's meant to be achieved. So, uh, in conclusion, I've just really tried to give us an example uh, to the answer to the question of how, how might we help teachers develop this capacity for project-based instruction. And I hope this is a little bit uh, illustrative of at least one kind of solution or one approach to doing that, that um, I think um, as, as Mext and, and uh, the whole uh, community of educators in Japan think about how actually to prepare teachers for um, for a more active approach to learning, that this kind of approach might be helpful or useful, at least in thinking about how do you systematically engage teachers in the development of this kind of knowledge. So with that, I'll conclude, and thank you again for the opportunity to speak, and um, hope this has been a helpful contribution. Thank you.